Now, I had to fix my phone earlier, guys. At, you know, my devices, they were kind of off track. But we back, you know, me and uh, my partner here, we back. We're just taking it easy. And uh, we're just, you know, understanding a lot of stuff. And, you know, we're looking at our reparations, and that's the main thing that we as black people need. We do. That's the brunt of our problems. That's the brunt of why we're in province, adjacent to crime. You know, everything, it, it leads to that. <clears throat> and we got a lot of people calling in on different platforms that are not us. They're calling in Tariq's show, different places, concerned about what we're supposed to have historically in our nation, what we uh, suffered, and what we did from the grassroots and from the soil, blood of the soil. And these people are coming here from islands, they're coming here from uh, Hispanics or Africans or whoever, deciding to critique and try to ne uh, mm, negotiate what belongs to someone else and say that they don't have any knowledge about the conversation, really. And we're educating them, which is, you know, something that I'm proud to do, but then again, we should not have to do that. That's something we shouldn't have to do. Like, that's that doesn't even really make sense. The grassroots is picking up arms well in the march. And we're letting people know who we are and who they are, as a matter of fact, in terms of us. I mean, you you know, we are really a powerful people. Like, the American Negro, uh, FBA, you know, R-A-D-O-S, we are, we are really uh, some powerful people. I have to say that, but I want to be careful in saying that because people are getting offended that we are coming in alignment with who we are and, and our very existence. And we end up being like a parent to groups, even though we suffer, like we're giving people stuff and we stand for people, even in terms of our <clears throat> overseers and people who um, are in high society positions. I mean, we just, we just been made to be that kind of people, but however, we don't, we don't need to be doing it now. It's time for us to think about us. We're in a dire state. I hate to say that, but in terms of people being comfortable and comfortable housing and jobs, you know, and going on with this agenda that the Democrat party is in. And I'm not sure the Republican party is definitely on the back line of this because now these Hispanics and these other immigrants have time to, um, basically they have time now to basically, um, finesse the whole government, not just Democrats. So we got to think about that. They haven't done it quite yet because the Republican Party is looking very strong for men. And, I, you know, and I, I love our women, but I want to say something. Men are, we are made to lead. We naturally feel that way. We like to do men things. We like that. Even if you're not even a half a man, you still at some point going to do what a man do. And we're different, but we're the same in terms of lineage. I'm talking to slave descendants. And men folk, we understand leadership because we're designed that way by birthright. That's our nature. Even a gay man, I've seen them do it. You know, at some point, you're going to open the door for that woman. At some point, you're going to pick up that pot for your mother when it's too heavy and she did all the cooking. At some point, you're going to put those curtains up because you can get up there in a chair and you're a heavy duty. You're going to nail that in the wall. At some point, you're going to be that. And, mo and if, especially if you are the epitome of a man, you're definitely going to be that. And you're going to lead and you're going to... You're going to say things to family in terms of gathering and try to be about <clears throat> leadership. And what we do is basically in my study, when it comes down to us and how we exist, we think problem solution. We don't think all in the middle and stuff. A lot of our females do that and we need our females there. They have emotion where they, they, they have the nurturing spirit. They know how to that's, get in the middle. And they can coupon and stuff like that. We don't think that way. We want to be strong. If we see somebody getting hurt, a lady or something, we're going to jump up. We're going to get angry. Some, You know, we're men. We want to be strong. And, and that's the whole reason I think we veered to the Republican Party is because we want to be patriarch. We, we, this is our country. We know who we are. We built it and we suffered and black men have feelings and you know, we 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 want to be empowered. We want to live before our children and our family, in, in 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 honor, not in shame. You know, the Latinos come here. They Mexicans. They got these trucks, and 
They're giving all these tax dollars through our banks who created slavery. See, it wasn't just the black woman who was a slave. It was also the men. Okay. And I mean, just the same. They didn't even look at us no different. The only thing they can do with a woman is reproduce other slaves. And Chase Bank and Wells Fargo and all them people who's giving Chinese stuff and partnering with immigration, giving them loans. Black men want storefronts. We want companies. We want things. But they make it hard for us and they stigmatize us and say, okay, you ain't going to do nothing. You're going to be a wild, crazy person. You're going to be selling drugs. You can't get loud. You just stuff that because we have this strong mentality that we have as a birthright. I'm not making no excuses. I'm just saying we exist that way. And we will veer toward the more Republican ideology in terms of existing and surviving because of us being honored in our home. This is our country. We fought for this country. Men went to the military. We fought all the leaders in the community and women too. So we have to be together on this. We can't be separated. But reparations is the brunt of our survival and what we need because this is how the country exists. It doesn't exist necessarily people doing things on their own. No, other groups are protected by government policy to live in a way in which they want Americans to live. You can't do this on your own. We're not even a tax-free group. We pay taxes. You have to, that's why in America, when they, when they, when they come in communities and they start gentrifying, you have to raise that business on the corner up adjacent to what they're building is because this is the American way. This is what we do. We support um, what we want to mirror as an American community. And we don't get that. Other people are getting that from our tax dollars and they're saying they're doing it on their own. They're going forth in pride with this. Oh, we got great jobs. We do this. Do that. Well, the government here and our people here and our tax dollars are supporting that cause for you. And if they wasn't, you would be back in your home country or homeland having to fend and stand like we did here. That's what we're saying. And you're getting stuff over our heads that we not have we haven't been getting. It's because they are envy of us and they want us to harm and be hurt. But this is where it stops. We're not going to allow that. And a lot of people are surprised that we as black people are standing up now. Just a good example of women are not really supposed to be in leadership, but they are next to us. And we have a lot of leaders that are females and, and I respect and revere them. Like Fannie Lou Hamer, like Mary Jane McLeod Bethune, you know, like uh, Madam C.J. Walker or uh, Harriet Tubman even, e Yvette Cornell. I mean, you can go on and on about some of my brilliance when it comes down to the ladies and the female. We need that. But at, at, at large, importantly, men lead. And we're designed to do that. And we're supposed to do it. I don't care about a sexual agenda away from you in your bedroom or whatever that's private. But as a community, we should not mix personal life. We should understand professionalism and our expertise in terms of even intellectual hierarchy. In terms of who we are and what we're able to do. We don't need to be dysfunctional about this. Because it's important. It's very important. So we're leaders in our community. You know. And how can we lead without the protection that we put in, in. That we deposit. When we deposit tax dollars and we're shaped to anchor to a system. Historically suffered it and been shaped by it. We have deposited something. And we're not protected by which and what we deposit. We're not protected by the house that we built. How can we build a house and people tell us, okay, y'all stay on the side where the roof is not finished or where the opening that we come in the inside. That's, that's crazy. So we built a house that we can't be sheltered by it. And you tell us to, oh, stay dry. Don't get wet. But the roof is leaking. Oh, so we got to run around while the roof leaking, try to get away from under there. Oh, it's dripping. Let me get over here. They say it stay dry. That's what that's like. You telling Americans to be some kind of American, but you're denying the, the slave descendant to be an American in terms of what it actually means to be one. You cannot come. You can't drive a car without keys. You can't say, OK, I'm going to go drive this car, but I have keys to a Honda. But this is actually an Acura. But it. You, you can't, that's backwards, holy ass backwards. You can't do that. And they're trying to tell us to do that. 
that is goofy. And a lot of us fail for it. Oh, pull up your bootstraps. How can we? You don't got no boots. They're afraid of who we are. Everybody got something from this government. Everybody. In terms of being a respected American. That's the liberties. That's her liberties. That's her freedoms. These are tax dollars. We're not going to give y'all everything, but we're going to put something here that's mandated for you to build from, you to buffer from, that you can be a respectful American. As a Latino, they've been doing that. We got DACA here. We got to give you partnership because you don't um, request as much wages as an American. So we're going to make you owners to companies and put you in construction. We're going to, for the East Indian, we're going to put you in IT. Chinese people, we're going to have you selling hair products. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. You're going to be buffered. You're going to own stuff. You're forced to be cleaner and better. But the slaves, I don't care about slaves. We can squeeze slaves to death. That's what they're saying. And that's where it damn stops at. This is how we exist. All uh, the banks was built from slavery. Chase, Wells Fargo, I've said this numbers of times. And they got their money from slavery. Now we can't go get a loan from them. And FHA, or when they go through these housing programs, they get the, they don't want you in their communities because they know you had an FHA. That's redlining. Instead of you going to Chase and all these other banks and get loans, they don't give you as much because everything is pretty saturated with white ownership. And white people rather partner with other groups because they are not in favor of the slave descendant concerning who we are and what they have been taught historically and then who we are in terms of development and culture, there's shame of there's shame of that because we have been able to do more than them. We have the face of entertainment, with the face of inventions, the, the cooking comes from us, the, the recipes, everything comes from us in terms of what people really enjoy. So we don't get to own nothing because of that. The, uh, some, that may be some of it too, and I think it is. As more I do my bit in my uh, assessment, these people are able to be the culture. So we're gonna own everything, and we'll get to say who the culture is because we own them. We can take them to jail. We can shoot them and say that they were being thugs. We can shape their mentality from the war on drugs. We can make them all look the same. Black men who we got on drugs. Now, see, this is why we're shooting you. Look how you're acting. Black people acting all wild in the community, which was shaped by capitalism. Pushing us in province, which is adjacent to crime and dysfunction. When you're in province around something that moves totally different from poverty. So you're entrapped in feudalism in terms of a society uh, way by constitution. And these other people are not knowledgeable enough to understand this. And your conversation is incompetent until we correct you and say, hey, wait, you have no business in my government um, um, history in terms of what I should be and who I should have. That is your disposition is very um a very unacceptable and we have to tell you this and we have to explain to you and we know some of us i don't mind doing that you need to know we had a little a latino girl talking to me about reparations and you think black people deserve reparations how many years have you guys had it who are you to negotiate and to negate what i should have and don't even know me in terms of history my direct suffering the auntie that I just lost two years ago, 90 something years old, had, I ain't gonna say blue eyes. She come from all of the epitome of America. No, I don't like having wins by saying I got native in me, but I do. That's 20% native in me, 30% uh, Irish and the rest African. Most Negroes in this country exist in mulatto status. But we don't have to say that. But when we do say it, a lot of the Pan-Africans, they get mad. But this is how we exist. We are the epitome of America, the beginning of America. Those red natives, they didn't really build America. Actually, they took part in slavery just to get along with the white men when they were ran off their land. We are the ones who built the country. And... A lot of the black ones, they got pushed into slavery because they had black skin to keep the confusion down. This is all documented. These are all invoices. Now, I'm not saying every person that here is indigenous. However, there is a mixture now. They mix black people together. It's like putting stew in a pot so that they can get 
the um, <clears throat> benefits of whatever agenda they're uh, using in terms of your black skin and to say in the stamp on you that that is a somebody's property that's a slave and him, her and their and its child to build this wealthy nation so other people can come here as a dream and to use the speeches of some icon that comes from this lineage, which is Dr. King, to benefit these other people as they put pictures on their wall as he's deceased after he said he had led us into a burning house. We're not crazy. And you have no right in as a Latino or a Somalian or anyone to try to neg negate that we or what we should have, that is uh, abomination. And in some countries, you'll be killed. But I'm not saying that's what we're going to do. We are a civilized nation to, for the most part. But it's not civilized. Uh, it's not civilized according to black people, how people treat black people and the slave descendants. And these are our direct ancestors that we're talking about. People who talk to us, people who blood is running through our veins. We could be, there's places where slaves were built right now in Georgia. They found out they built towns over the slaves. We, we can't even go and say, okay, did we have to remember our great grandparents or something? Because they took an, a, a community and built an economy on top of our bones. Do you know how horrific that is to be the American Negro? I don't think you understand. So you have you you have to learn, and we don't mind teaching you. We I, some some people do when they, they I, I can't argue with whether they do or not because I, I, we shouldn't have to do that, and we're not going to do that at every to every point. But those who are sincere who want to know, we are going to share and impart dialogue to you, so you will understand. You getting off on the wrong track, you know. You're playing around the wrong woods. This is not your camp. You don't have no dogs in this race. But we're going to tell you so that you be receptive and understand going forth. Because this is not something we're going to drop. We cannot even live here without the respect of our community and our society and our tax dollars. Without the respect of United States liberties. Way by constitution. You are benefiting from our liberties. You're benefiting directly in your community. And look, we're not crazy. You don't get to uh, copy the white man's ideology uh, when it's not uh, when it's disingenuous about who we are. You don't even know who we are. We get to tell you who we are. There's a lot of us. We're very sophisticated about ourselves and we understand this. I can tell you so much I've done for the community alone. Being a black man, where I come from, my family owned, uh, they had their sharecropping, they ran, got ran off their land, they've been inserted so many times by white supremacy. There's been mayors and police in my family who have to deal with life as a black person. My grandfather was told to go away from the, the polls to vote after he came from the Korean War. He fought top sergeant. My grandmother graduated from a college and taught school then she became a nurse we have been a progressive state but we have been inserted also the fact that we're slave descendants in the united states and we have never received anything in compensation to say that we're special people and to protect and buffer us to safety actually it's been the opposite we have been bombed from the air by black wall street when in black wall street which we built a thriving community that we should be able to reflect reflect from this very day and Rosewood. And so you immigrants don't even really understand. You're here def definitely taking, you're eating from the money that comes out of my pocket. Actually, you're being taken care of by me in the most powerful country in the entire world because of the strength, the suffering, and the soul, and the life of FBA and the American Negro ADOS. So I'm here to tell you, you're benefiting from that reason, you and your children. And we respect we respect you and you don't respect us. And right now we're talking about our cause and we're up front and we're, we're ringing the bell. We, we are identifying with every truth to win what belongs to us so that we can survive in this country in a way in which an American is supposed to exchange. We're not going to continue to be locked out of America and under America. And we're not cowards. We stayed in our country when we built it. We're not talking about nobody, but there's a lot we can say. There's a lot we can say. So you won't win on this. 
You, you, you know, you'll learn a lot. Be still learn. And as I always say, when I do my talks to the American government, cut the check. <laughs>